So in our contact bit, do they just agree yeah. and they're going to be sharp in yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I've got to sign this up as well. Yeah, what's going to say to you, if you're going to go I'm here for... Well, no, I didn't know you were coming, you didn't know it. Right, shall I, shall I throw some names at it, at it yeah? Um, You've got uh, George. George. No, George's. George's on it anyway. So, no, Laureen I think is, Arthur's um, doing it. Arthur's doing it. Um, <laughs> you've got the option of Bob Milne or Bob Milne. It's got to be Bob Milne. Yeah, it's it's by process of Someone handed it to me and said, uh, can you uh, make sure that uh, yeah. the table gets it? Not with me, no. Um, I've been using a shared computer. Right, uh, okay. Um, I haven't got them with me. I can't yeah. access them either from here. Um, blum, 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 blum. I'm just trying to think what the best thing is to do. Do you need them in advance of tomorrow night? Ideally, I was hoping to go back to the Um, I can't access them. Um, <laughs> one that one 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 that has been delivered by Claudia. Okay. Oh right. Okay. Um, you will have 
Behind the complete full sets with the dendron at the back. Okay. Yeah. No, it's just me, I'm afraid. Uh, point of um, interest. interest. I'm yeah. for lots of so. uh, You will need to declare that as a personal, as, as a non pecuniary interest as a member of Lots of Parish Council. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Um, so. Um, Yeah. Yeah. 
read out the emergency evacuation announcement. Should we be required to evacuate the building, would you please leave the building via the nearest available exit to the chamber? Our assembly point will be in the public car park at the side of the civic suite. Please do not delay your evacu evacuation to collect any belongings. Please do not return to the building until given permission to do so by council staff. Please note that this meeting will be audio recorded. And can I also ask that members and everybody turns their mobiles off or put them on silent, please? Chairman, just before we get started, is it possible to turn those front set of lights off to make the image a bit clearer? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay. Welcome to this meeting of the Development Committee. Members of the public are reminded that this is an official council meeting and the item before us will be debated according to the usual council rules that apply to council meetings to which the public are admitted. Members of the public are not permitted to speak at this meeting unless they have previously registered to speak with member services. In this way, everyone present will be able to hear the debate and councillors will be able to make an informed decision. Gender item one. Apologies for absence have been received in the office from Councillor Black, Councillor Griffin, Councillor Christine Mason, Councillor Mrs Shaw and Councillor Milne. Are there any other apologies for absence? No. Can I move that Councillor David Merrick acts as Vice Chairman for this meeting? Is that agreed? Second that, yes. Okay. Is that everybody agreed that? And two, Councillor Oton will be substituting for Councillor Black, Councillor Mrs Gooding will be substituting for Councillor Griffin, Councillor Michael Hoyer will be substituting for Councillor Christine Mason, Councillor Williams is substituting for Councillor Mrs Shaw and Councillor Smith is substituting for Councillor Milne. Are there any other substitute members please? Chairman, I'm substituting for Councillor Black. I did say that. Mm -hmm. But I, I did say that. No, I, was, I was noting that. Okay, that's fine. Sorry. Are there any other substitute members? <coughs> no. Item three. Are there any non members attending, please? Councillor Lucas Gill. Councillor Chris Stanton. Thank you. Item four. Do members agree the minutes of the meeting held on the 24th of May 2016? Three. 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 Item 6. Application land west of Oak Road and North Hall of Road, Rochford. Ah, really Sorry, yeah, declaration of interest. Anybody? By virtue of being a member of Rochford Parish Council. Okay. Yeah. Ward members Councillor Mike, Mike, Mike Lucas Gill, Councillor Mike Steptoe, and Councillor Arthur Williams. Mike Stranks will present the officer's report. Thank you, Jamie. Um, this site, as we can we see on the image here, uh, is on the uh, northern side of Hall Road. The full extent of the site that's uh, a planning issue is in the overall site that I'm sort of broadly outlining here, the combination of the blue and the red. But what interests us tonight is this part in the white. What you can see ghosting through underneath there is the layout we've already agreed because this is uh, a former outline application that prior to that the land was released from the green belt it obtained outline permission as you can see in your report and then more recently reserved matters for 293 dwellings <coughs> being uh, under construction as we speak and what's before you tonight is the balance of the 600 307 units which are proposed in this area here this island that you can see at the top here that's the school site which uh, some members will be aware is also part of the overall uh, development scheme. If we could go to uh, the next, sorry, I might turn it on that. Go to the next, that's it. Just before we go to some other details, we'll come back to this layer. But a better image of what's before you tonight is this detailed layer. What you see in the colour here, the dwellings themselves off the roads linking in with the earlier phase and then the landscaped area, which is the very western edge, and you'll see that there's a landscape strip between the edge of the development and Ironwell Lane, which runs through it here. Members, if they're getting their bearings, just see the railway line um, just off the edge there, and Oak Road properties in this vicinity here, Hall Road, Hall Road existing properties, finishing round about here, and then open land opposite. There is a footpath link through the earlier phase of the development that links Ironwell Lane, through to the uh, footpath that then continues across um, to Cherry Orchard uh, Country Park. 
Now, if we could go to the typology slides, please. A significant background to the outline permission was that we didn't want to get 600 of, if you like, like houses where they're all built in the same brick uniformity and, and boring. And the intention was to um, establish character streets, as you can see here. And what I'd like to do before we go through the details is to take you through each street so that members can understand at this detailed stage we're looking at, as you go through one street and you walk into another, you get a different perception. You might actually see the same house type in terms of the overall box height, room sizes, but the appearance of the building will be very different. You'll have seen from the report there's some, uh, when we first had it, 19 house types, but you'll see from the addendum there's been a, a further single house type added. So there is 20 house types, but there are many variations, a bit like if you buy a car and then you get a different trim level. So what you've got is 19, uh, if you like, basic chassis, but with connotations depending on what part of the colours that you see underneath. And the best way of showing you this is to colour up the overall finished site. And I'll now take you through um, the first character area. As you can see, this is character typology A which is the entrance areas into the site. There's two, one in the previous scheme where the T-Drive junction is being built where members are familiar. In this phase, although the roundabout was built, uh, or was approved under the uh, existing details, this part of the layout, sorry, this part of the layout leads you off um, the roundabout here. So for consideration tonight is this front is developed for part A. Here we see the previous part A in the earlier reserve matters. And you'll see the themes that were taken. It's important to get some local distinction between the uh, new buildings, which you'll see as typical examples of which below. You'll see there's a mix of two and a half story rooms in the roof and two story dwellings. And you'll see they've picked up themes from areas around Rochford. Most of these, I think, are in Rochford uh, town centre, East Street and, uh, and, uh, and West and Westroom. If we go to the next one, here you'll see the artist's impression of as you drive in to the area, I think this is the T-Road Junction under construction, you can see the kind of form and formality, tree-lined streets, roads in the middle, pavements behind the verges before you get to the dwellings to give members a, a taste of the concepts that have been employed within this area A. And then we go through a similar exercise with area B, you'll see this now leaves the main entrance road and goes through onto the spine road, which forms a U with the purple bit, which we'll come to through the estate back down to the other entrance areas. And as we look at these again, things picked up some slight changes. You'll see there's a, um, an inclusion here of an interesting detail inspired the architect from uh, Ashington Heights. You'll see the use of more weatherboarding, blending through, and typical architectural details on the right-hand side of the screen, which have been embodied into the individual designs. If we then finish on, a perspective again to give you an idea of, of the overall look of it. Obviously, in the blocks that you'll see that look like some kind of paving, because this is computer generated, these are actually the images of other structures or surfaces in the, in the, in the street. We then go to the typology C, which follows the spine road round to think with the access under construction. You'll we'll note from the bottom screen the elevations are of like a terraced form, okay, an increasing uh, site density. Subtle changes in the architectural finishes with the four images on the right, and you'll see some slightly different um, uh, sources of, of the detailing on and around Rochford, but mostly from the West Street and South Street areas. And here we see a, a different uh, <coughs> perspective of this character area, but members will see, hopefully, what's come out through this is a difference in architectural style and treatment from the two areas that you've seen already. Now if we go to character F, you'll see this area is more higher density in the middle part of the site. Um, again, taking themes from Rochford, but you'll see the typical elevations of the buildings in the group at the bottom. Single pot um, chimneys, you'll see suddenly appear. You'll get the variation in treatment and surfaces as well as landscaping. And we've got an image here again. Now character G, what interests us tonight is this area actually at the top. Character G was uh, the axis that runs through the footpath from the swale through the site to the 
uh, footpath going through there, we are looking at this top part. The drainage lagoons have already been built and approved under the um, earlier phase, but we're looking at some house types that go uh, on that part. And you'll see the slight density and spacing changes, all in accordance with the council standard, but the architect's approach um, has been uh, to vary those to introduce character forms, linked gar garages, sorry, go back a bit, big click happy there, um, different forms and roof lines, Hopefully members are now getting an impression, see the introductory of hip roof ends on the, on the end unit on the far right. We get an impression that as you've gone through this estate slowly, you go into different parts of the new development, you go into different streets, you're arriving in a different place. Now, it's only one small area of eye. Um, most of eye along the Hall Road frontage uh, in this vicinity was uh, approved in the early phase. We've got a little bit of eye at the roundabout junction you see these house types are inspired by the existing development at Frontsville Road. Those are the six images you see on the top of the plan. Some uh, detailing, <coughs> obviously gates to driveways to houses, bay windows and features here. And at the bottom we see typical uh, house types. Um, and you'll see the inclusion of, of larger uh, two and a half storey we call with the main two storey with rooms in the roof as a, a typical examples of the elevation or treatment. And again, typology um, schematic. Now if we look at the area J1, just two to go, just um, this area in the two greens. J1 is an area that faces out of the site onto the landscaped area where you see the area J1. But what interests us are the buildings that are east of the red dot there. And if we go on to the next, you'll see typical typologies. One of interest is these house types here which have uh, upstairs lounges and balconies overlooking that landscaped area. They have ground floor accommodation, but the, the alongside the bedrooms of one part of the wing of the building is a, a quite decent sized upstairs lounge with the balcony, but that doesn't overlook neighbours, that overlooks the adjoining track and then the uh, landscaping beyond. And you'll see the themes that they've taken, again this time moving into the areas of Mornington Avenue as well as parts of, of Rochford. And here we see an image of uh, a 3D form of what they would look like. Lastly, a similar approach, outward looking to the area of the uh, Ironwell Lane to the north. And you'll see again inspiration of the idea of the detailing, um, Ashington Heights features again, as well as Hall Road and some areas of North Street. You'll see the bay windows and the use of weatherboarding. And you'll see these typical house types on the bottom here. Again, you'll notice the spacing between buildings as they sort of bleed into the countryside, as it were, from the higher densities in the middle. <coughs> and here we see a schematic of those. And that's that. If we can um, switch to the uh, street settings, please, which is a separate PowerPoint file. There's just two of those we can zoom in as best we can, but the top image shows the character I, that's the, these are the ones that front or row, the, the two, the other side of the roundabout that we saw. Then this one down um, is typology uh, J1, this is the uh, area looking out over the, um, the landscaped area on the western edge, a little bit of B at the top, you remember the road, the blue area curled round to, to junction with that. And then in the third image is typology A. This is the uh, street to that fronts the, the access road in off the roundabout. This is the character F area, the central area, the red that we saw in the middle of the plan uh, with a little bit of A on the top where it connects. If we could, yeah, I can jump to the next one, there you go. Um, the top image is the spine road running through the site, what we call uh, typology B. And then in the middle is typology uh, J2. This is the area that fronts the uh, Ironwell Lane boundary and the open space <coughs> as well between that and the actual extent of Ironwell Lane itself. And then in the third image, it's uh, the, the G areas in the northeast corner. Uh, and and that, that's the, the images of this. Uh, Regards to street scenes that we put forward. Now, 
on, if we can go to the 25th of May <coughs> file, please. Members will see um, from page three to the addendum that the applicant has revised the clustering of the affordable housing. Um, it's back of far in one of the first two that we get that. So I think the arrow back possibly it should be two files. It's not it's not on my lines, it's on the uh not in the drive book but on the the night on the seventh of June. There's two files, one is the power form and then that's the top one. And it's the third plan from the bottom, it says uh HA location plan. If we can jump to the um, phase two PowerPoint part, oh, that's it, it's in there, and that's on. Oh. If we can go back to the PowerPoint and jump to the phase two plans. What's, what's happened, Chairman, is that the... subject to concern expressed by my residents. <coughs> yeah, I think I'm going to stop and say this. This, this area here uh, was fully affordable housing. And what the applicants have done, they've taken out four plots of the affordable housing, um, which actually amounted to five, because one was an upstairs flat with a downstairs flat and they've <coughs> taken those units and redistributed them over here. And in this part, they've uh, made four plots of uh, private owned uh, housing and you'll see the details of that are in the addendum. So the application has changed to how it was originally written up by officers uh, a couple of weeks or so ago and in that time the applicant has had a look again at the representations made and has felt that they could make that change to those uh, four plots. Now that's what's before members tonight. It is in its amended form with the private housing edge now fully along this part of the site. There is still a block of affordable housing inside the site, and you'll see from representations that have been received since the revision from the uh, Oak Road Residents Association that uh, they feel that the whole block should have been redistributed. But officers consider that the um, plan that we were trying to reach for, which showed you the clustering about the development is acceptable in planning terms and that it's really the, uh, if you like, applicants, the applicants' goodwill to say, well, you meet, do something to uh, change that. It's not a, a technical requirement under planning. As the application was originally, before when the report was written, it stood the tests of your policies and general planning guidance. But that's a change that the applicant has done. They've taken out those <coughs> or amount of four plots that are now uh, in process of <coughs> private housing. And you'll see details of that on the addendum. Also on the addendum, members will see that the County Highway Authority have no objection to raise against the proposal. And members will also see from the report that uh, the County Highway Authority were actively involved in the design and details prior to submission. Rochford Parish Council have expressed concern that the system downtime preventing public viewing of the application details but as uh, members will realise, we have had uh, a delay in bringing this to <coughs> today, so hopefully that has given people um, time uh, to view the plans in better detail and comment if they wish. Members will see that the County Education Authority wish to ensure that there is emergency access to uh, the school site. Now, the, the difficulty we have is that the school details aren't seen, but they may well actually constitute a County Council application in their own right, which will be a consultee that the framework of the outline application permits access points, that there is another um, side to it that we can, <coughs> by uh, way of an, uh, a condition, and you'll see that we're recommending an additional condition, that because this land is part of the application site, we can uh, justify a condition to require the submission of details when these details are known, because the, um, the county highway, the county education authority may not uh, serve notice on the applicant they want the school to the 100 or so 
uh, buildings are occupied. So it'll be some time in the future before the detailed designs are known. But the details can be submitted and considered to, to gain access off the uh, farm track that is retained alongside the landscaping area through here that will give the school access to maintain the playing field and emergency firefighting on the playing field if they uh, wish to do so. So bearing in mind those two uh, additional heads of conditions chairman, the one by the highway authority to do the road services and the education authority's requirement for the access details, the recommendation is approval subject to those additional heads of conditions you'll see on the, on the addendum and to those that are also set out in the report. Thank you. <clears throat> there are no speakers, public speakers. Uh, so are there any non-members of the committee who would like to speak? Are there any committee members who would like to speak? Um, Councillor Stanley? Um, I'm a bit concerned as to um, the, uh, if you like, the discharge of, of water to the site, from the site, and what, what would actually come off the site in, with so much housing. Um, what, what, what's in, the, in that uh, drawing for, for balancing, it balancing by the swales or something like that, is it? Chairman, the outline application was accompanied by a flood risk assessment which considered the drainage strategy. And the first phase agreed the drainage details across the remainder of the site. They obviously needed to do that because obviously to build these, the effective drains this way. And how it works, there's two balancing ponds at this end. There are drainage swales which are low ways so that in dry weather, they would, uh, if you like, puddle or fill up uh, in, sorry, in, wet weather they would puddle or fill up in excessive rain periods, but in dry weather they would be dry. The balancing ponds are expected to be wet most of the time. And there's a drainage swale running through here, as well as all the piping and oversized piping that you get in schemes whereby the water is held back. The basic concept is that the green field as it was has a certain discharge rate of so many litres per second. I can't remember what it actually was. But the architects and designers then have to say, right, we take this amount, which is the discharge, and we have to design a drainage strategy for the whole site that means that when the development is built, the discharge rate is either the same or better. And in this case, the arrangements that we're making in the site give a slight uplift, which pleased the environment agency at the time. Members will know that now the matter is largely dealt with by the Essex County Council's Sustainable Drainage Scheme. You'll remember that when this was dealt with at outline, <coughs> it was the Environment Agency. So the designers have actually improved the discharge slightly. Again, I can't tell you by what amount. But their requirement was to either achieve the current discharge rate or better it. And they bettered it. And that's the scheme that's being built at the site. There isn't any foundations currently being laid. They're putting in all the roads and the drainage pipes and things they need to do to build the first days and then hopefully lead on to this one as well. Do we cover that? Uh, well, partially, it's just uh, what concerns me most is that if you've got balancing ponds in that corner there where, where you've got the, the private housing, if you like, um, and you've got the discharge into that, um, and the construction of that balancing pond um, worries me slightly uh, because of the area that's going to be taken up with the excessive water, um, especially as it rains. As we know, if the swales are not constructed correctly in, in the way that the pipe at one end to the other, um, they will fill up even sometime um, and can't get away because the, 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 the ground is uh, of. Um, of, uh, uh, of the soil is, is, is uh, London clay, and it's very difficult to get away. Can I just raise that these matters of the flooding were dealt with at the outline yes. stage? Yes. So, where we are today is that those matters have been resolved, those matters have been put um, in front of the development agency who then deal with it, 
and the flood risk as, as, as is, is, now is, is, is now all dealt with and en engineered correctly. Obviously, it's for us then to, to check that's all in place, and we obviously will check that. But the application before us is reserved matters to do with detail, um, not not those issues. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Are there any committee members who would like to speak on this application? Councillor Smith. Thank you. Uh, two, two separate points. Um, I'll do them one, one at a time. Um, just with, within the addendum, there's, there's quite a lot of uh, information about the National Space Standards. So Mr. Strange didn't really go into much detail on that. Could I just have a, a brief resume on that area, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, you'll remember that the policy DM4, which is in your uh, adopted uh, development control development management to these standards, took up the mantle that was missing with changes to the building rigs about the uh, need for rooms to be a certain site. And shortly after we adopted it in 2014, the government standardised it to perhaps avoid one council having a view that a bedroom should be a certain floor space and over the hedge another council uh, having a different view and designers would know where to stand, etc. Now, what the government said was that where a council like ourselves has a policy, then we should follow the national guidance. Where a council like, I think, perhaps South End doesn't have a policy, then no space standards apply. Now, I've set out in a table there the 20 house types, and I've given you a comment beneath that table which shows that most of the house types you'll see, where they fail, they fail on storage space. Yet the actual gross requirement is, is far in excess, with the exception of the Neville house type that's in, been introduced, which is one square metres short of the gross overall requirement. You'll see that there's house types there that are larger in gross floor space than the government's minimum size to start with. But as a consequence of the layout of the room sizes, some of them, for instance, can need a single bedroom for the, um, seven and a half square metres minimum. They can only achieve in two, two house types, affecting some 24 of the 307 dwellings. They can only, they can only achieve a, a third or fourth bedroom and five square metres in area. Now, you'll see from the comment below, there's perhaps not much we can do about that. Partly the house types were uh, agreed in the earlier phase anyway, but also the design input that went into these goes back post outline where we had to agree a design brief for the site, and now these details that are before you are some two, three years later on from that, and they post date the government's national standards. So you'll see that the comment that we feel is that whilst these 24 have slightly undersized bedrooms, they've still got big other rooms, but it'd be the traditional box room or small child room, it would perhaps be unreasonable to, to ask the applicant to go back and, un, and revise those house types because they've been working on standards that were required when they got the outline decision that they then worked up to the first details with the design brief before that and this application now keeps that character and that design code. So the shortfall only affects 24 of the 307 dwellings before you. They have uh, a single bedroom, but instead of being seven and a half metres in the area, it's only five, and that's in the case of that one particular room in the house. Thank you. Can I go to the second question? Um, just looking at, at, at landscaping issues, um, from the, the, the diagrams that we've seen, um, clearly the, the landscaping is, is an important part of the matured aspect of, of, of this site where, when it happens. Um, the, there's description of a, a variety of uh, native native styles and, of, of trees and so on, but I, I, I'm just looking for reassurance that the w within the, the development, not in the apartment areas, that the, the native styles are going to be compliant with the, the 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 nature of growth that they have because although we're we, we love trees within this area we do know that there's there's a particular type of tree the London plane that doesn't 
turn up pavements so much, whereas some of the, the native trees do turn up pavements, they cause root damage uh, and so on. I'm just looking for reassurance that those sort of longer term issues are considered within this rather than it just being a, a planting scheme that is going to look good. Chairman, the Council's Arboriculture Officer has studied the landscaping scheme in detail. The details which we have, they don't actually go into the private garden areas of, of the plots, but they very much concentrate on the streets and giving a different feel as you go from street to street. So where the houses are set back, different species that would, as the arboriculturist says, do well in that location have been selected. And where the built forms are perhaps closer to the pavement, there's more emphasis on small hedges and shrubs um, so that they would do well in those more limited rooting areas. But all the species that are chosen as, as he told me, they perhaps wouldn't win an overall design board, but they're species that will do very well in those environments that are suited to uh, the position they're sited in next to sort of car parking areas or next to houses. They're well chosen, as well as being native, for the environment that we're creating. In other words, there's probably nobody going to go and stick a big willow or something in a front garden that's going to uproot the house or poplars and things like this that drop leaves off every, uh, branches off everywhere. It's been well thought out, um, so I think members can be reassured that, and you'll see there's a condition in the recommendation that asks for the, that ensures that this scheme is, is implemented with the approval. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> um, could you just give them clarification on visitor parking? Because it, it appears in the report that there's not sufficient parking for visitors and is it going to end up being a development with cars parked on pavements and you know, just general chaos? We don't expect so, Chairman. One of the problems that, that we had when we were speaking with the county highways um, officers in the run-up to submission of details was a fear <coughs> of life that the site would become a, a commuter car park. We've got the train and the, and the airport um, not too far away and they wanted the design to uh, encourage people not to park on the streets, as it were. There's a, there's a bus route through the middle of the site, and they wanted to make sure that if they provided the visitor spaces that weren't allocated, that you wouldn't get casual parking for a day from commuters. And rather than put down traffic orders and signage and double yellow lines and then have to police it, they said, we need to do this at the design stage. Now, you'll see from the addendum that the County Highway Authority hasn't objected to the amount or lack of visitor parking that I've set out for you in the report. That is, that is deliberate. You'll know that your parking standards, so <coughs> that you're close to a town centre, you're close to alternative transport uh, options such as rail, bus, and in this case even air. The strategy is you don't need as much parking as if you were, say, you was in a uh, further out uh, rural area where there's perhaps no bus service at all. So when you factor in the, the lack of car dependency that the, the County Highway Authority would, would treat as a strategy, and the fact that uh, a lot of the houses on here have visitor parking as well as the parking, the two spaces or more they would require, County Highways do not wish to see areas in the layout that would be given over to a, a free-for-all for car parking. So, they don't wish us to uh, go back to the developer and say you've got to provide more visitor unallocated car park. Sorry, can I come back to you? In the um, case of visitor parking, um, I appreciate what you said, but it's proven, you know, particularly on the Birds Estate in Rayleigh, which is next to the train station, that subsequently, after that's been built, they've had to have um, traffic control orders, you know, lines for outside of people's houses which has subsequently caused them issues where they live and um, where their families have grown up they can't park outside their own homes so i don't really agree with the comments from highways it's interesting um, the members refer to the birds estate i'll, I'll quote you one example a few years ago now uh, where there was a house type on a, on a, on a curb of a road there was, wasn't no possibility to get a driver in front of the garage and we had an application to convert that garage it was controlled by condition to prevent it being converted the owner proposed to 
uh, change the use of that garage to a room or whatever, having no car parking at all. And it wasn't even possible to park in front of the house on the, on the curb side because of the, the road curb. And you, members will know that the Birds Estate is next to Rayleigh train station, similar distance perhaps, mm -hmm. as this. We refused planning permission for that. The owner went to appeal and he won his appeal. The planning inspector granted him permission to convert his garage, leaving hardly room for a motorbike to park on the plot. Now, that's the point, that your, your parking standards and strategy, and where the county authority are, is that where you're close to a town centre, you don't need so many car parking spaces because perhaps the public car parks or people don't have so many cars because of the availability of services and transport options. So whilst I accept what you're saying, in reality, people will park on the drive and want to go to work, the reality is that it's difficult for us as a planning authority in a location like this to insist on the extra provision. We wouldn't get any support, I feel, on appeal. If you look at the example of the garage conversion on the example that you mentioned. Councillor Holloway. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'm asking some questions around the um, affordable housing. Um, I understand the concept of pepper potting and clustering, and I understand that housing providers like to cluster more than pepper potting, even though pepper potting is more desirable. Um, I'm a bit concerned that the clusters appear to be quite large. Can you indicate on the map for members where the clusters will be to start with? Thank you. Have a go, Chairman. We did have a plan that we can't retreat, which showed them in blue. But yes. the, the, sort of the cluster areas, if I try and remember, including the earlier phase, is in this vicinity here, some more in this part. Yes. Um, there's another area, I think, in here. This area up there, another area around there. Um, <coughs> if anybody familiar with the plans and see the houses with a blue dot of the, um, the affordable housing, there is 600 dwellings overall. You mm. can't see all the detailed layouts in the white. And on there, there is 210 affordable units. And that accords with, with your policy, and they've been grouped in a way that the council's housing manager is, is acceptable with. Um, I think on, on the pepper potting question, I think the idea was that you wouldn't get alternative looking buildings in a place on the site, shoved in the corner, say how it used to be done 10, 15 years ago. I think with this scheme, members can be confident that where the houses exist, <coughs> they're finished in the same materials to the rest in the street. So architecturally, the hope is that you wouldn't be able to distinguish between the affordable units and the privately owned or otherwise uh, units. The, the idea of pepper potting was to disperse affordable housing amongst the layout, whereas in this case the clusters that we have will be designed such that they will look at the materials that, that are being employed and the detailing we went through earlier, they will also feature in the buildings that will be affordable. If that helps, Jim. Thank you, just somewhat. Could also, could I have clarification about paragraph 4.26 on page 6.16 please, is that possible? I wasn't aware that we could condition for that, if that is what that means. Um, just for reference, it says that um, the, council the council's housing allocations team leader has reviewed the layout proposed and has forced this development subject to the council receiving nomination rights of the 35% of the housing allocation. That seems conditional support. Ch Chairman, it's not in the conditions recommended because the uh, the allocate the nomination rights are all wrapped up in the yeah. outline application. Remember, this is the sort of the last part, as it were, of an earlier history which I set out earlier. So, like we spoke about drainage and highway matters and things like this, those those strategies and the nomination rights for affordable housing are in. The, I think they're a clause in the legal agreement. I don't think they're a planning condition. That's they're right. a part of the legal agreement on the site. Anybody else wish to speak? Councillor Hookway. Yeah, just going back to um, <coughs> the comments raised with regard to um, additional parking uh, and, and the 
way the design is uh, it's not sort of like a allocated space for for that. Um, <coughs> the issue with a lot of um, <coughs> new developments of, of this type of design is that um, you're you're going to get a variety of different people, including tradespeople, who have their own um, vans <laughs> and vehicles, of, you know, much bigger than an ordinary uh, uh, private sort of like uh, <coughs> car. So, um, is there anything in the design to accommodate um, sort of like uh, trades vehicles, which uh, might might uh, be uh, parked on the sites? Chairman, um, it's true with most uh, schemes, um, there isn't allocated spaces for oversized or, or larger vehicles. The, the, you'll actually find that the space, car parking spaces in this scheme are to what you refer to as your preferred standard, the slightly larger one, not only the larger internal garages at 7 by 3 but also the parking spaces at 5.5 by 2.9. So those spaces that are provided are larger, they probably accommodate uh, sort of a transit van, things like that on the drive, um, whereas in the other areas we have that are older, they're built to the old 2.4 by 4.8, they've probably struggled, struggled to do so. Um, but there's no dedicated, if you imagine, van parking or delivery vehicle spaces, laybys in, in this, this land. Um, another question um, in regard to the um, uh, layout of the um, sort of like the landscape in layout. Um, is um, any of that uh, sort of, is there any trees there that have any um, preservation orders on them within that area? Was any of the um, landscaping sort of like a part of the original sort of scheme? Was it completely all, all going to be new? Chairman, the site was a, an arable field. So what you have, you have a track running through here with a, a small pond that's being retained here. It's got some tree growth around it. You have Ironwell Lane, which is unaffected, the other side of the landscaping strip inside the site. But along the whole road front, there's, I think, half a dozen oak trees that are preserved. And they're retained. What the applicant is, is doing, um, you'll see they've actually taken a saw around the circumference of the tree and cut the ivy with big wedges. They're not part of the tree, but they've, they've killed the ivy. So you'll see that some of those trees have gone brown all in the top and people think, oh, they're dying. But actually, it's the ivy leaf that is dying, having had the care to cut the ivy around the base. Now, those trees, those oak trees, are being retained in the frontage. The dying elm that was underneath and leaning in the roads or over the cycle path from sometimes, that's all being taken away. And what the applicant will do, that proved under the details to the previous scheme, is improve this edge, they're actually going to plant more like hedge lights and shrubs, uh, probably a few trees as well, in this whole row frontage. It's not part of the scheme you've got before you tonight. Uh, and then they will put up a, a sort of three rail, uh, sort of ranch style fence to give it some protection whilst it establishes. Uh, and there have been lengthy discussions with the County Highway Authority of, about that, um, because like up here, there's a, there's a landscape edge before you get to the housing. Um, on this side, so the vehicle pathways and things that will be near those trees, they'll be sufficiently away from the routing system that will allow it to establish. <coughs> but the preserved trees that are on the front of your whole road aren't adversely affected, but the management has given us phone calls in the office because people see you go around with a saw to cut the ivy and they think they're felling the trees. Understandably so, but the trees are still standing at the end of the call, so I think we'll be ensured that. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, just thought to uh, raise one point uh, before I move on. Um, those comments about uh, social housing and affordable housing, those that are familiar with the Braid Lane site, it's interesting to now go and visit that site, and it's a bit of a challenge now to go and identify which of those properties are the social housing, the affordable housing. They blend in extremely well, and. Uh, I've no, I, I, I'm quite happy that this is going to do the same. I'm quite happy, Chairman, to move or propose that we uh, accept the recommendations of the officers. Um, I hope we get a second.
be subject to the amendments. The subject to the amendments. Okay. Do we have a second that? Okay, so the motion is that we move to recommend this as as the committee. Can we show our hands please? Meeting. Thank you all for attending. We need to close at 8 
Okay, don't help. It doesn't help. 